All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kerbali SpaceX mod, which is being made by forum user HarrisJosh2711, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, as the name does say, Kerbalized parts based on off of SpaceX designs. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love that? So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a gander at what all parts this does add into the game. So let's of course start by our usual Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then head down to our handy mod filters, leaving on just J and H, as that is where all of our parts fall in. Now you may notice a couple of additional mods here compared to normal, and that is because we actually do have some dependencies I should mention now. Now the primary dependency to make sure that the actual parts work, at least well, some of the parts that have solar panels, you will need near future solar. Now for the internal views on these various command pods, to make sure all of that functions, you do also need the raster prop monitor mod as well as the asset props pack now with all of those installed you should be good to go so let's start with the dpd dragon version one which as you can see here is quite comparable in size to our typical mark 1-2 command pod though i have to say I like the look of this a bit more. Very nice, I love all the riveting to it. A very good looking command pod overall with a special little feature here we'll talk about in a moment. Now as for the stats on this thing, it does not hold any Kerbals, but is purely an unmanned command pod with the typical data transmitter built in. It does have a docking node just right up here at the top that is just by default a docking node there. It is, of course, a lifting surface, has RCS, reaction wheel, SAS. Interestingly, for an unmanned command pod, it does hold a crew report, but also has a temperature, pressure, and gravity data experiment as well. And then, of course, we do have a battery for electric charge and a tank of monopropellant. Now, the fun little feature I mentioned right here has to do with those different experiments. If we just zoom in and, of course, right-click on the ship, we can open up the little port here to actually expose that pressure, gravity, and temperature experiment and actually it, you know, you have a nice little small container in here. You could probably fit one or two more things into if you were so inclined. It's not very big, but you could probably get something in there, I'm sure. Probably maybe a small RTG, something along those lines. But yes, I just love that little feature. It's quite cool. I like the little, the little pop-up docking port, or not docking port, rather, but just a port. I keep thinking docking port because that's what it's labeled as here. But no, no, it's, it's just a little flap that opens. And there we are. That is the Dragon V1, a very, very cool command pod. Now let's throw that over here and grab the next one, which <laughs> is a big one. And it is the ITS Titan. There we are. Look at it in all of its gigantic glory. It dwarfs the Mark 1-2. And this, of course, is also an un unmanned command pod, but it can hold up to 17 Kerbals. Now it does have a built-in alternator that goes with the built-in engine we'll talk about in a moment. The typical data transmitter, a docking node, which I'll show momentarily. The engine does have a maximum thrust of 440 kilonewtons, ISP of 274. Then, of course, a lifting surface RCS, reaction wheel, SAS. The only science experiment on this one is the crew report, but we do have a lot of resources with electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. So you got a lot to go with there. And uh, my favorite thing about this one, watch the top. Again, we right click and look at the tiny, tiny little docking port. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why, but this gigantic freaking command pod, it just amuses me that it has this tiny little command or uh, docking port right there. It entertains me greatly. Though from a design perspective, I think perhaps this hatch here might be a bit too large comparative to, you know, the tiny hatches we have on other command pods. But oh well, such is life. Now let's chuck this one off, zoom back in a little bit, and move on to our next 
next, the J50 Dragon V2. Now again, this is an unmanned command pod that can hold up to seven Kerbals. Again, built-in alternator, data transmitter, a docking node, which again, I'll show momentarily. The engine on this one has a maximum thrust of 240 kilonewtons, ISP of 235. We then have the typical RCS reaction wheel, SAS crew report, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and of course, oxidizer. Now, as for the docking port on this one, we uh, just open up that entire sort of uh, nose cone on that craft, and it just pops out quite nicely there. Now, we actually do have another Dragon V2 here, which we'll look at in a moment, but I just do just want to point out the placement of the engines and the windows on this one, as that's really the big difference between this particular Dragon V2 and the next one we'll look at, which, of course, I'm just going to pop up on the top, since it is, of course, also a V2. There we are. So as you can see, the engines are pretty much all in the same place on it. We have slightly different design, uh, different texturing to it, not a whole lot of difference between the two overall. And of course, this one does have the same uh, docking port that pops up right there. But the, uh, the docking port's actually a little bit off kilter. If we actually do flip them around and pop them there, you can see that uh, the J50, its nose cone goes quite a far ways into the other command pod, whereas the J505 does not. So it's just a, a slightly different design, it seems, up at the top end of it. And other than that, it's really just down to texturing and styling between the two, personally. I prefer the J505. I don't know why, I just seem to like it a little bit more. But overall, it pretty much functions the same. Now, the next parts we have, which is again just two different versions of one command pod, I'm a. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I have no idea what the K9X space bug is. Considering this mod is supposed to be all about Kerbalized SpaceX parts. I've never seen any SpaceX thing that looks like this. Now, from a Kerbal perspective, I actually really love this thing. It is by far the most Kerbalized of all of these command pods, and I just love the design of it. It is a very, very cool. But from a SpaceX perspective, I, I'm clueless. If there is something out there that's like this, please do inform me in the comments, guys, because I tried looking for it online earlier, I couldn't find a thing, so I would love to know. But overall, it is a pretty cool command pod, and we have uh, two different versions of it. This one has a built-in heat shield, and then the other, well, I mean, doesn't have a built-in heat shield. Both of them do have a docking port right on the top that we can pop out there, and of course it does have, if we pop it this way, four little engine ports right there, and then of course an attachment point right there dead center for you to add, say, another engine or hooking it to the rest of a rocket, something along those lines. Now either way you go with one of these things, it is an unmanned command pod that can hold up to seven Kerbals. It will have, well this one has an ablator, the other does not. Both though will have a data transmitter, the uh, docking node as I did show you, an engine with 240 kilonewtons of thrust, 244 on the ISP. Reaction wheel, SAS crew report, then electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. Let's just have a quick look at this one to make sure it is the same on the engine stats. Yes, it would appear to be so. But yeah, it's just uh, just two different versions of whatever this is. Now, I got to again, from a SpaceX perspective, I don't know what this is, but from a Kerbal perspective, I love it. It's beautiful. But let's actually move on to our next parts here. Now, sadly, the only thing we have in the fuel tank category is a small little monopropellant tank, which you can, uh, of course, attach radially and does have SpaceX on it. You know, branding, always got to have that. We got nothing in engine, nothing in command and control, nothing in structural, but in coupling, we do have a Dragon 2 docking port, which is just a, you know, 
big old ring docking port for you to use at your leisure. Now the next is the payloads, and these are the two things that rely on near future solar to function properly. We have the TR-500 advanced trunk and the TR-5002 advanced trunk. Now the difference between the two of them is a slightly different design to their actual solar panels, as you can see here, just a different texturing to them. And the 5002 actually does produce a less electricity than the 500. The 501, as you can see here, does 32. The 5002 doing only 12 on the curved panel. So over, other than that though, they are quite similar in everything, including the fact that they're hollow. Kind of hard to see there, but much easier to see right there. Now what is fun is that it's hollow and it's gigantic. Let's actually see if we can turn on squad parts real quick here. And if we go to fuel tanks, we can actually fit one of the uh, 3.75 tanks you know, inside of this, if we so desire. There we go, there's an internal attachment point. It sticks out the end there, but it fits and, you know, is actually covered quite nicely. So if you went with one of the smaller ones and you could then put an engine in there or really whatever else your heart desires, it is quite nice. I, I do like the trunk there. You can fit a lot of junk in that trunk and who doesn't love that? Now let's lose those and then we have an, in aerodynamics a single dragon nose cone, which for the dragon capsules we did have, it was really geared towards the first one we had a look at there but uh there we are a uh, lovely little nose cone that does have a decoupler so it'll blow off from the front and then nothing in ground in thermal we do have a dragon heat shield there we are we'll pop that there and it does have some lovely little legs so you know you can land a lot more safely other than that it does of course have a decoupler and well is an ablator and i believe yes that is the last of our parts here for the kerbalized spacex a good series of parts and actually let's go back up here and pop that thing on its proper capsule there we go fits perfectly and yeah that just pops right off and then you have the docking port there so good times indeed uh but yeah so let's actually go take a look at some of these out in the world now on the launch pad I have a monstrosity built so that we can look at the internal views and also test out the engines on these things. As remember, all of them except for that original Dragon V1, which of course is the center console there, all the others have built-in engines. So um, yeah, we're gonna look at those and it's gonna be wonderful. Now the first engine, let's uh, throttle ourselves down. We're gonna kind of go through this in sequence. Let's uh, pop that one. So we're on the ITS Titan. Let's go over to it. And now the internal views sadly are kind of repeated. We really only have two different internal views and it depends on which one of these ships that you're in, depends on which you get. So this Titan has this particular very, very cramped view where you're right up against all the controls but um yes there we are controls and we can cycle through all 17 of our various kerbals just kind of packed really really tightly in here which honestly is a bit of a shame for the titan because of how big this thing is you'd really expect it to have a bit more room and hopefully a proper internal view custom to it will come in the future uh, but for right now that's what we got now let's launch the engine and there we go we are away at full power we uh actually can go pretty high and pretty far on this but um we're gonna we're just gonna point it that direction away from everything else and say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Kerbals, all 17 of you. I, oh, you're not going to live for much longer. Okay, so the next one we have is, of course, one of the K9X space bugs. And uh, this view is a bit roomier and is actually, I believe, the view of all the rest of the command pods from here on out. But yeah, a lovely thing with all sorts of uh, raster prop monitor stuff there for you to just put on anything you desire, which is quite cool. And well, quite a lot more space than the other one. A lot roomier, which is quite nice. And for the life of me, I can't figure out what in the heck that bottle down at the bottom there is supposed to be. Is it like window cleaner or something? 
I can't, I can't, it says fire extinguisher, but that is not a fire extinguisher. That looks like a Windex bottle. <laughs> But yes, fun times, fun times indeed there. Lots of good different positions, so let's exit out of there. And did the other, oh god, there it is. <laughs> oh god, it's out of control. Oh boy, that titan, oh it's going down, it's finally dying. Wow, it didn't explode. Huh, I'll be darned. Well, let's launch this one then. So, thro oh, no, I actually need to be, <laughs> I forgot to actually switch over. Oh yes, it really didn't explode. Wow, that is a tough Titan. Lovely. So on to this one, which if we take off, there we are, beautiful. Again, a, you know, lovely engine that actually has some pretty good power to it. Add some wings on this thing and it's pretty much a self-contained space plane, which is pretty nice, but once again, it's time to, oh no, it won't let me abandon this one. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, yep, I have a better plan. Let's revert flight back to launch. <laughs> like I said, there are really only the two internal views. So you have now seen them no matter which of these we go with. So these four right here have this particular view, and then the uh, ITS over here has uh, its other more cramped view. So instead of looking at each of them individually, let's um, let's launch these babies. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, and blast off. There we go. Oh no, it switched me over to this one, no. <laughs> All right, we switched quick enough, and just fire the rest. And then switch, fire, switch, fire, and back to the bottom. There we go, lovely. They have all taken off. <laughs> and they are all free to do as they wish now. Oh, it's gonna end in tears for every single one of them. But you know what? I'm okay with that. So with that out of the way, let's go to the tracking station and just quickly take a look at what you can also do with these in orbit. When you have, say for instance, the proper trunk attached to them and you know, dock them, ready to go. We've got the two different Dragon V2s here that have been docked together. And as I did show you earlier, we can fit those large 3.7 whatever size tanks in there. And uh, with some engines and they work quite nicely. So overall, a very, very cool little addition of parts. Now I still have no idea what in the world that K9X is, but besides that, all the parts are very, very cool. And well, even the K9X, I do find awesome, just confusing. But they're all very well made parts, very well put together. And there is of course more to come in the future. I'm hoping that we get a bit more diversity in the internal views. I'd really love to see that. And I do know that from of course the mod page, eventually the mod maker is also hoping to add in the actual launch vehicle. So some more rockets into it. But for the time being, we have some lovely command modules and various support parts. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, and I would definitely recommend that you go and do that, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.